I, as an experiential educator, often get asked the question, how do you evaluate experiential learning? So any activities, STEM, project-based learning, anything that's self-directed or personalized is experiential. So um, how do you evaluate an experience? How do you look at growth and skills developed and not just content knowledge and how much you've remembered, but how much students have really absorbed it, the deep level of learning. How do you evaluate that? How do you assess that? I do um, this in a variety of ways, and I have a blog post on four specific ways that I do this. I encourage you to go check that out at experientiallearningdepot.com. But I'm going to focus this video on one particular way, which is rubrics. Rubrics are really great for assessing and evaluating experiences. You can look at a variety of criteria from content knowledge and understanding of content knowledge and specific skills, um, proficiencies. You can look at, students can um, evaluate goals and a variety of things you can, you can put into a rubric. So rubrics are really great for experiential learning. They're also really good because there's a variety of different ways you can approach experiential learning. So there's self-directed project-based learning is one way. STEM could be a way. Any inquiry-based learning experience, as long as it's self-directed, personalized, and a variety of other elements that define experiential learning, um, then rubrics really work really well for any of those things because they can be uniquely designed to whatever the activity is, and uniquely designed to the student. So one particular way that I like to use rubrics is to have my students create their own student-generated rubrics so that they can focus on their unique attributes, their goals, um, the skills that they want to develop, specific content knowledge that they want to learn. All of that can be um, customized and formatted to fit their unique learning experience. So this is my student-generated project-based learning rubric. This could be used for any activity, but this particular one is in my project-based learning toolkit. Um, it's just a template. You can you do not need to purchase this, but one of the benefits of using mine is that I provide these word banks. Let me get over to these. Um, for criteria, so you can see there's a list of variety of criteria there. Um, and then levels of mastery options. So it just helps guide students in the right direction. So let's zoom in a little bit. I'm going to show you how to use this. So let's say your student, you have a student who's doing a self-directed project-based learning experience on careers. You've assigned them this umbrella theme of careers. Maybe they're seniors, juniors, and one particular student chooses a project on sonography, for example. And she goes down here and chooses, these are the, um, you can just copy and paste these in, expert, master, apprentice, go back up here and put it in there. And you would, she would add those across the board. She could also use her own if she doesn't like what is offered here. All the way across. Um, and then on this side, like any rubric, she would put in evaluation criteria. So maybe she's... Um, because it's a career thing, maybe she's looking at trying to get, um, okay, sonography, so in the medical profession, um, critical thinking, maybe that's an important one that this student wants to work on. And in the process of this project-based learning experience, she's going to design her project in a way that will help her build this skill of critical thinking. And then she just does that across the board. And in the middle here, she'll, she'll be more specific. She'll write in a description of what would make her an expert in this particular skill, and so on. Um, maybe for this project, she's going to actually intern or shadow a sonographer in their workspace. And then, um, you know, one of her, she could just type, if that's not in my word bank there, she could just type in, um, my internship, you know, how did that go? And then put specifics in there. Um, so this is very specific. I, I haven't really put a lot of effort or thought into creating this rubric. Students would have to put more time into it, but 
the bottom line is that this is very specific to this person's goals, her career goals, and this particular project. So you could give every student the same rubric, but this rubric is specific to this student's experiences. So that is why I like student-generated rubrics. Um, they're really great for experiential learning.